Hey, it's 2017. Let's fix some games. All right, guys, welcome to Arcade Body Shop. The first episode shot in 2017, we are working on the pack. You saw episode one, this is the Flood Pack, the game that spent 20 days underwater, and uh, we're getting to it, man. Uh, did some Bondo work, did some uh, preliminary stuff. We got the cabinet all sanded down in episode one. If you haven't seen that, go back and check it out. And uh, right now, I've been just kind of looking at the cabinet, trying to figure out what the next step is. And I really feel before we start getting into like more Bondo, let's look at the structural damage. And uh, if you can see right here, this really bows. And it was kind of MDF, and I'm sure it soaked up a ton of that nasty water. So I want to get rid of that. This is bowed down here. So we're going to get rid of that. This back piece of like quarter inch, I know it's a little hard to see, it's dark in there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And then this game actually had some structural damage when I got it to begin with. Um, right here, this back piece, that was blown out. Instead of fixing it, let's just put new wood in there. So we're basically gonna rebuild this whole top half and uh, that's what I wanna get into for this episode. Um, also decided that coin box in there, if you go in there and look, that's pretty, Pretty toasty too. And I don't ever plan on this thing taking coins again. Uh, if I do, I can address that and make a new box. So I think we're gonna go ahead and take that out and maybe the shelf and we'll put a new shelf in there for structural reasons. And then we're gonna take out the, uh, the bottom. This back piece looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm not gonna touch that. We'll just sand that down and make that look nice and pretty. Uh, another little thing that I noticed from this thing being on its side during the flood and a lot of water coming through I noticed that this side right here that was bearing all the weight is kind of bowing in. So what I think I'm going to do is build a temporary brace that I put in there at this exact width. We'll take a measurement from up here because we know it's exact. And uh, we'll go ahead and put that brace in there and try to like flex the uh, wood back the other way. I think if we leave it in there long enough, like a week or two, um, it will take the shape. If anything, the, the back door when we cut it and put it in, uh, we might have to pry it into place, but that will, that will bring it back to square. So that's the plan for today, guys. We're gonna give Pac-Man here a little haircut. I'm gonna recut all this stuff in uh, MDF up here. I'm probably gonna end up doing this in MDF because I don't have any three-quarter uh, plywood right now. And uh, then we'll go ahead and address this stuff inside. There's the nice Donkey Kong all finished, yeah. And then this just showed up. Uh, Smash TV, not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with it because I got a fully working one coming uh, very shortly. And then uh, fix it, Felix. I got going on there. Got a lot of projects. Got the uh, pole positions I'm working on at the same time. So lots of stuff. But let's get into this, and uh, we'll get started. All right. The first thing I want to do is I want to mark these panels because I want to know exactly where they are. Because um, looking at this, I saw a gap here uh, from this little side piece that holds uh, it braces the marquee on the front, and there was a about almost half inch gap. And I was like, I wondered if this drooped. But then I went and looked at my other uh, Pac-Man cabinet. And uh, that's actually supposed to be there. So I want to know exactly where these uh, lines are before I cut this stuff out. So just get yourself a sharp pencil. Um, I prefer the $20 bill, y'all. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we're just going to mark uh, where these line up so we'll have a nice line on the cabinet once we cut these out. And we can line everything exactly back up so the marquee and everything will fit. So I'm just drawing some lines on the inside. Do it there. Do it underneath. Do it on the front. this side and then we'll go down here get this back piece now they're gonna have like dado holes where they cut um, it's a, kind of like a mortise and tenon joint how these things go together and that's what makes it fun to take apart so as you got those all marked back is self-explanatory I guess we go ahead and do the top this will really show up because of the yellow All right, and I know this is extraordinary, the amount of build that we're gonna do on this thing. And like I said, if it wasn't for the sentimental value, I got a brand new one sitting over there that I could do, but this guy deserves to come back, so we're gonna do it right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lay this on his back, and we'll go ahead 
And uh, you can cut it on the sides, but that's just gonna really tear this thing up. And I don't wanna tear up the side of the cabinet. So the best bet to do to replace a top, back, or uh, speaker panel, just cut it right down the middle with a Sawzall. And then that will give you leverage to work out these uh, like mortise and tenon joints on the side. I am not gonna replace them that way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them to the exact width and then, uh, and then I'll probably use a Craig jig um, on the inside here where you won't see it. And that will just pull everything tight together. But first what we wanna do now that we got these all marked, we're gonna go ahead and take some uh, width me measurements and everything to make sure that we have that written down before we do that. And then we can also, once we have the width, we can, uh, you know, even with the cut in the middle, we can use these as templates if there's holes or anything like that, just match it up to the outside width and, uh, and do that. We can do that with the back door holes too. So let's go ahead and get some measurements and then we will get to cutting. All right, now what we wanna get is the width of the cab. I think it's like 23 inches, somewhere around there. Um, I'm gonna check down here real quick, make sure it's the same all the way through. We can get a shrinkage, looks like 23 and a quarter. And right here, it's a little more than 23 and a quarter. Well, what I'll do is I'll also look online at the plans. Three and a quarter. Let's check that one more time. It's 23 and a quarter at the front. It's like 23 and just a hair over a quarter. All right, well, we'll check the back now too. And then I'll also show you the, uh, the bulging uh, thing that I, I showed you about with the cabinet taking the weight of the cab so let's check that we'll go ahead and uh, measure the back and I think up here is probably gonna be the most solid spot and it looks just about 23 and a quarter uh, in between uh, I went and measured the other one and that was at 23 and a quarter so I think that's what we're looking at here um, for a width so we'll write that down so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and flip this on its back and then we'll start cutting all right, I got the cabinet laid on his back and I put a uh, two by four block to lift it up off the ground so I won't hit the floor with the Sawzall blade. So I'm just gonna use the Sawzall and I'm gonna cut through and this is gonna loosen everything up so we can actually shift and uh, try to work these things out. Um, Cause if you start pounding it with a hammer then it will start damaging the sides of the cab. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start cutting and we'll cut through and then we'll cut down this, uh, this back part here. There's that part. All right, we're through there. So this, yeah, it's starting to wiggle. So then we'll get through here up to that line. All right, so we got those parts out of the way. We're just gonna have to start working this. Yeah, I mean, I can feel just how brittle this stuff is. You know, so we can start knocking that apart. We'll get a rubber mallet in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the back now, or the top, and uh, we'll leave the back on there for now for uh, structural stability. bottom all right this thing's gonna want to come apart let me go ahead and get a rubber mallet there we go go ahead and see it comes out nice and neat and once that's out of the way, these are gonna come out. Cause they actually have uh, some pins. They shot nails in through the side. So we can go ahead and get those out. But that's what I'm talking about, how they're kind of mortise and tendoned in. These nails pulled through and they came out with it. And then we do the same on the top here. There's no special thing, you just want to kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it off. There we 
we go. So another mortise and tenon joint, but I mean, we cannot fix this wood. It's just saturated and just total garbage. Just trying to loosen that up. You just don't want to go too crazy because you start really prying on it and then all the stuff comes out. But yeah, this stuff is just disintegrated. Like you can feel it. slowly work this out pull it out of that joint there you go and then that piece comes right out all right so we got all the the nasty dirty wood out and the great thing is I'll be able to paint this before you know I can really go in and clean it and get it really uh, super painted because this thing stinks right now and I'm gonna put uh, tons of coats of primer on it to seal it all up um, like I said, we'll take out that coin box. We'll take out the back and the bottom. So we're pretty much just saving the sides and the front and then some of this structural stuff in the middle, but it's gonna be nice in the end. So I got the cabinet standing back up now and we took off the top and all the internal parts. I went ahead and smashed out the, uh, the coin box too because that was just disgusting. Um, I don't think you guys really need to see that. But now we got the plywood in the back here. I'm gonna cut it straight down the middle and then I'll save these sides for templates so I can trace out where the, uh, the air handles are. And, uh, well, not air handles, I'm thinking Galaga. Um, air screens, and we got one, so we can save that. This was broken uh, from the time I got it. So we can just go ahead and do that, and then we can re recreate this. And, um, yeah, and then I think we gotta get some nails out. So let's get this cut. Now I know some of you guys are saying, Jeff, I thought we were saving this thing. Uh, we are, but even if this never went through the flood, I probably would have took this piece off and rebuilt it anyways. And the top had some swelling even before it went underwater. So, you know, structurally, we're just gonna make it sound, make it brand new uh, and, uh, and fresh looking. You know, if we're gonna go through the trouble of stenciling it and doing all that, let's just make the cabinet structurally sound. The bottoms go bad in these all the time. So that's something we probably would have done anyways. So just really the internal part is the only part that probably would have been okay. Um, but this is just the right way to do it. This is going to go in my house. I don't want to smell like dirty old, you know, river water. So we're going to do it right and rebuild this thing all the way up. So got this piece. Now you got to be careful with that because you don't want to bust out any of this plywood. So it really is just a ginger back and forth of trying to loosen it up which we might actually have to hammer this and get a pry bar and all that stuff. So let me try to get this off and then we'll come back and we'll get some nails out. All right, I got the back off, but boy, oh boy, did we got some work out, cut out for us. Um, this side right here, when it came out, all this wood where it was attached was super fragile and actually came off with the board. So, um, you know, it's just rotted out it's just, you know, the nature of the beast. We can build this back up because the great thing is the outside skin is still okay. So what we're gonna have to do is cut some wood uh, to that, go ahead and get it all glued in there, reclamped um, to the right size. And then we'll come back with the belt sander and just flush it up to the cab. Same thing with this side. The side was all rotted out on the back, all delaminated. So, you know, liquid hardener is not gonna fix that. So, um, so we can do that. Or the other option would be, you know, get this cleaned up, bond to it flat, and then we, we just cut this back piece just a touch wider. But I, I think bringing it back to the factory is gonna be, I tried to cut it with a Sawzall and I started chewing the hell out of the cab. So I'll just skim coat that with Bondo before we paint and primer the inside. So uh, and that's the coin door. We had that all taken out. So I'm just trying to pull out all the smelly parts. The plywood's not that bad. You know, especially once we get it all sealed. And then the only other thing now is that that bottom's got to go at some point. So um, I think next step would be go ahead and get all these nails out and then we can start cutting new pieces to go in. We're gonna go ahead and take all these nails out. Now they'll pop out through the side where they had wood filler from the factory. And uh, I could just cut these all off, but then there's a chance that it pops back out. And we gotta, we gotta do a lot of Bondo and stuff on this cabinet anyway, so. 
might as well get them out while we can. So I'm just trying to hang on to the side to give it some stability. And they're coming out pretty easy. They're all just shot in with a nail gun. I'm not left-handed. So go ahead and get all these out. Man, these cabinets are rickety with no top on them. We'll go ahead and pull these nails out. You can pretty much pull them out by hand. And like I said, it is leaving holes in the side. They just original wood puttied these when they did them in the factory before they painted them. So we'll just do that with Bondo when we get the cab all ready. I mean, technically, if we wanted to mount it, we could just screw right through these holes that are here because we have to bond to it anyways. So we might do that. Let's go ahead and get these guys out. Look at these nails, they're like weird old like railroad spikes. All right, it's actually the next day and I wanted to give the cab a good cleaning. So that's all I did off camera. So I really scrubbed this thing. It still had mud inside it, believe it or not. I've washed this thing like four times. And uh, I think the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the wood and everything. But while we got it wide open like this, I wanna go ahead and get the whole inside painted and sealed and just make sure that uh, you know nothing seeps back through any odors or anything. It actually doesn't smell bad now. I, I really Lysol uh, disinfected the whole thing, did it with bleach water, did it with Simple Green, just repeated the process till it was as clean as possible. Um, so I got some black uh, paint and primer in one. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that. I'll show you guys a little bit of it. Um, I got some uh, primer in one uh, black satin uh, paint that I'm gonna do all the parts with, and then I'll probably roll good part of the inside because I wanna do it nice and thick. I could spray the whole cabinet, but I want a nice thick coat in there. And um, you know, they traditionally only have black up front and stuff. They did that to save money. I'm gonna paint the whole inside black just to seal everything. Not worry about the bottom because we're gonna replace that wood. We gotta get this whole top rebuilt first though because if I take that out now, it's just literally gonna be two pieces of wood holding it up. And uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll get the inside all sprayed and then uh, I'll go ahead and start rolling it, get a nice coat on that. We can let it dry while we go ahead and cut the wood. I got the first uh, two coats of this on and that's where I'm gonna leave it for now. I just really wanted to seal up the inside. Uh, as you can see, it looks pretty pretty darn good, man. It doesn't look muddy, it doesn't look gross like it was. And uh, it's looking pretty good. So we'll walk around, look from the inside. I did not do the very bottom because we're still gonna take the bottom out. And I figured once I have this thing on its back and that's out, it's gonna be much easier to paint up under there. But I did the shelf. As I said, I took out the coin box and did the sides sealed every nook and cranny so this thing doesn't really smell like a sock anymore and that therefore i'll be able to bring it in the house right wife right right see and that's how you guys uh work on projects man just get them busy doing some sort of project on the side and then they leave you alone about the arcades look at her carrying chop saws she's doing work over there but anyways my wife's amazing she puts up with so much with these arcade games in the garage right hon yeah, all right. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get set up with the table saw and we'll start uh, cutting, cutting some wood and we'll put a top and a backpack on this piece. I think I might have to wait. I don't think I have any uh, quarter inch to go in here um, and I need a piece of half inch for in here. So I guess I could do a three quarter inch. There's enough room. Um, doesn't really matter as long as the bottom still lines up the same. So we'll get to that when we get there. Let's start with the top and the back. All right, I got a big piece of MDF uh, set up on the table saw just as a table. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this rail, and uh, that works really awesome. You can get these cheap at Harbor Freight, like 13 bucks. I think I paid for it when it was on sale. And it gives you a, just a straight guide to go down. And um, what you do is you measure over, you hear the chickens? You measure over from your blade to the edge, and on mine it's one inch over. So I'm going to rough cut it. The dimensions we're going to need this board are going to be 23 and a half by 23 and a quarter. 
and that is the the length and the width um, so I marked 24 and I marked over to 25 where I'm gonna put the rail because then we'll cut down 24 what I'm doing is just trying to get this down to a manageable piece so that way I can go ahead and put it on the table saw and, and that way you know just going down the fence it will be nice and exactly square so um, I'm just cutting it to a 24 inch wide piece first and then uh, we'll run it through the table saw for the final final uh, dimensions of the wood all right, I got this locked in at 25 inches, 24 inches in my mark. That's exactly where it's going to cut. And then we'll run it through the saw down to the final width. So just keep keep this against the uh, the bar right here. Like I said, you can get these like 13 bucks, man. It, it's so worth it. And uh, it, it beats manhandling trying to get this thing through the big table saw. So we'll go ahead and cut this to a manageable size. <laughs> So we got our piece of MDF uh, cut down into a manageable size, got it on a table saw, got the table saw fence set for 23 and a half inches from the fence to the blade and that is the distance from the front to the back for the top piece. So we'll go ahead and cut the, uh, the front to back and then we'll spin it 90 degrees and then we'll cut it down at 23 and a quarter which will give us our width and then this piece will fit right in, brand new top. So let's go ahead and cut it. Most important part is to keep it right against the fence. Right. So we got our front to back measurement. And then we'll go ahead and reset the fence here real quick. And we'll go to 23 and a quarter. It's not quite a perfect square. It's a quarter inch difference between the front and the back. And I always, just to make sure, especially when we want it consistent, make sure we're right at 23 and a quarter, which we are. And then we'll take the board we just cut. Make sure we got the right side. I think we do. So we just cut 23 and a half. That's 23 and a half. So this is 23 and three quarters. So we got to cut this side down to width. All right, here's cut number two. one more time. Make sure we got everything right. We're at 23 and a half and we're at 23 and a quarter. So let's go ahead and pop this in and see how our new roof looks. All right we'll take this. The good thing is the cleats are still up there from when we took it out and we'll line this all up and this lines up flush with the back so we come back a little bit farther. And the cab itself is out of square a little bit. What I'll do is I'll clamp it and glue this in pit place when I do the, uh, the thing. So, but yeah, there you go. Nice new top. And, and this really, it, it, it's not just flood stuff. A lot of times I see games that have, you know, tops that are questionable. Instead of messing with them, man, you can just cut it out, you know, cut a new piece, fit it in there. And this is good to go. So the only thing we got to do on this one, we got to cut out the uh, the power hole um, for the the on-off switch in the back. And I think what we'll do next is jump on to the back, and then hopefully we can get these two pieces put together, and the cab's gonna start taking shape again. And uh, if we have time, we'll go ahead and do the um, the speaker grill, and uh, we'll get that put in too, the speaker hole part right here. So we got those all coming up, man. I think it's looking good.
All right, well, I got this set up for 23 and a quarter, which is the width of the cabinet. And uh, I actually got this piece of plywood. I looked at Lowe's and they actually had it in like the scrap pile bin for, I think I got it for $3. And it's perfect for this because we can just match it up and, and uh, put it in there. I didn't think I had any and I forgot I had this piece. So we're gonna go ahead and put this um, for the back piece where the grills are. Um, that part was plywood and uh, the top was like an MDF particle board. So I use the MDF on top. We're going to go with the natural plywood on the back for the, the grill part and uh, make it as close to original as we can. So we're going to go ahead and put this through. It's at 23 and a quarter right now, which is that same width. I haven't changed anything. So we'll go ahead and cut this one, and then we'll cut it to um, height. Most important part is just keep it against the fence. We'll go ahead and get our measurement on the, the height. And I think we're gonna have to put it in here. I, I believe it's at a slight angle. Uh, I gotta check the, the angle of the old piece and we'll actually have to tilt the blade to match that angle. So that way the back coming down meets the top and it, it's, it's square and flush. So I'll get those measurements and I'll come back and we'll make those cuts. All right, for this back part, we gotta kinda do a little bit of math because we got a couple things going on here. First off, we're gonna have to create this ledge on the back um, for the, this is where the back door sits into the half inch. So we're gonna have to do a half inch relief. Um, I could put the dado stack in there to do that. I'll just take it out with a, a bunch of several wipes on there. And then on this, I don't know if you can see down there, there's an angle to this cut where the roof matches because we're not gonna have this tenon joint anymore. We're gonna take that out. Um, so this will be flat, but we need to find that angle so I should be able to put this on a table saw and just move the blade till it matches that and we'll get it close enough where it'll be a nice cut. Um, I had to get the overall length. It looks like 14 inches is going to be it all the way down to that tab. And then we'll figure out from the bottom of this. Looks like 13, 13 and a quarter. And then we'll do that, uh, that relief tab on the bottom. So uh, we're figuring it all out. And uh, first things first, we're going to go ahead and cut this board down to 14 inches. All right, I went ahead and cut it down to uh, 14 inches wide, which is the total width of the back sitting like this. And then I figured out the angle with the old piece. I put the old piece against there, turned the blade. It looks like it's around seven degrees, eight degrees. Um, not much of an angle, just, just enough to meet up. So now we're gonna cut it through and cut the angle on there. And then once that's done, we'll match it up and then we'll uh, go ahead and cut the groove out for the uh, back door. We'll go ahead and test fit this. Now we got the angle so it's sloping down. So this will go up in here. And once that's clamped, you won't even see that. If you do, we could bondo that line, but I think that's gonna be good. So next step is gonna be to go ahead and cut our groove in the wood here for the, uh, for the back door. So we'll go ahead and cut about a half inch and we'll cut it down a half inch deep. Um, we'll just make a series of passes and then we'll take it out with the, with the saw to make that groove. All right, I got the saw all set up to make the groove for the back door. So I got this, the blade height set at a half inch. This is three quarter inch, so that will leave a quarter of an inch um, left there. And what we wanna do is cut a groove out that's three quarters, well, half inch wide. Um, so I went ahead and marked half inch against the blade. So we'll make this one cut go all the way through, then we'll adjust the fence a little bit and just keep making cuts until we, we willow that out. We could do it with a router, this is faster and I could take the time to put the dado stack in there and do it all at once, but I mean literally like five, six cuts, this thing's gonna be good to go and then we'll have that groove for the back. So I'll go ahead and get set up and we'll start making those cuts. Like I said, I'll, I forgot to mention, the blade is back up to 90 degrees. Uh, we took the angle off it because we don't need it now. So the angle side's gonna be against the fence and then we'll cut the grooves. Um, so it will go in the cabinet this way. So that's the part that goes down 
make sure about that. Let's go ahead and make some cuts. I was thinking it was probably an easier way to do it. I bet you I could just go set the fence and go straight up and cut the cut this way. So I'll set up and do that. Just making sure the cut height is going to be high enough. The blade's got to come up a little bit. That looks good. And then we gotta do it at a quarter of an inch. All right, so this should work. Make sure we're dead on there. This will give us that nice groove for the back door. for the back door so that will go in the cabinet like this back door will sit in that and we're good to go all right I got the original piece there matched up with this one and uh, it looks pretty good man I think we nailed it we got same amount of gap on each and then you know the height seems right so the last thing we got to do is go ahead and uh, cut out these vent holes for the back and I figured let's not reinvent the wheel, let's just trace these things, but I do want to make sure that they're square and in the right place. So uh, let's go ahead and measure, I think it's four and a half, so four and a half, I got four and a half here, I'll mark four and a half on this side, make sure we got it, go ahead and get square. And what I want to do this for is just template lines to make sure that I get this bottom lined up when I trace it. Keep it nice and square. So we'll do that there. And then we'll go ahead and measure over. Now this has that extra plywood in there, so we don't want to get that in there, but two and a half inches from the outside. So we'll go two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. And two and a half. So I'll draw my guidelines here. Just line these up, use it as a straight edge. This uh, square actually went through the flood, as you can see. So we're going to go ahead and this is just going to give us reference lines for to where to line this thing up because I'm literally just going to take this and line up the side, line up the bottom. There we are. That looks lined up. And then we'll, we'll just trace this out. And this will be something we can do easily with the jigsaw. We'll just clamp down the, clamp down the wood. Now, as I showed you, this was originally busted out on the other side. Um, so we would have had to redo this anyways. So it doesn't matter because the holes are exactly the same. We can just slide this over.
we go. It's all traced out. I'll go ahead and get some clamps, and we'll get this clamp down, and then we'll uh, we'll drill some holes and then jigsaw it. All right, we got it all set up to uh, cut. Got my jigsaw here. Got a fine tooth blade in there that will uh, keep the uh, plywood from splintering off as much as possible. This is the outside back, so we want to go this way down. That way, if there is any tear out, it will be on the back side of this. And uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put two holes in each one that will give me an in and out to be able to get. Uh, the cool thing is this was able to clamp down on my table saw just on the outside, so we're not going to hit any metal or anything. And we've got lots of room, so I'm going to get close as I can to that line. And I'll put one over here. I'm just trying to stay right close as I can to that line. I think this is going to look pretty good. So we got those, that gives us an in and out um, to be able to get through. And then you just want to get the sawdust up here so your saw doesn't catch on it when you go. And then the key to this is just going as slow as you can. Um, we'll be able to get in there with some sandpaper. It's going to be a pain because it's in there. I wish I had one of those oscillating spindle sanders. Maybe for my birthday. But um, just go slow and try to stay on that line as close as you can. I think it might be easier just to put a put a uh, drill in every corner. First one, a little rough in the corners where the screw holes are, but we can sand that out no problem. These are the times, man, you wish you had a CNC. We'll be able to get in there with like a little Dremel sander or anything to you know square these up a little bit better. They look pretty good though.
looking pretty good. Done. All right, so we'll go ahead and get some sandpaper. We'll clean up some of these little rough edges. And once this is painted and the screens are behind it, I don't think you'll notice at all. So we'll do that and uh, I'll get this all cleaned up and then we'll start assembly. These look pretty good, uh, but I'm just going to clean up the inside just a little bit, try to neaten it up, get a little closer to the lines on some spots where I wavered. Uh, best tool for this Dremel. Um, I got the sanding one. Probably won't be able to get too tight into these corners because I don't have the small sanding disc, but I just want to get the wavy parts out. Alright, we're getting there. We're gonna get uh, ready to go ahead and put the top on. I was going to go ahead and use uh, Craig jigs and uh, pull them in with screws from the inside, but because of the mortise and tenon joint that's in there, the like dado cut, the screws wouldn't really have anything to pull into. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what they did, nail it from the outside, and then if I have to, I can uh, you know drill a hole through these cleats to screw into it and pull it down. I don't think we're going to need it. I'm going to glue the crap out of it right now and go ahead and clamp it and then shoot it from the side with brad nails just like they did from the factory. And, uh, and then we'll do the same thing on the back. And we still got a, this to deal with, but I think I'm going to get this piece of wood in here hooked into these cleats here. And then uh, we can get some wood glued in there and then we'll, we'll just sand it flush to, to match at the end. I think that's going to be the easiest way. And whatever's uh, ugly, we can fix with Bondo at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some glue up here and I can see where the board goes. So we'll get that lined up. We'll get it clamped from the top and then we'll start shooting some nails. And I went ahead and sanded a little bit up top here where I painted just so this, this wood glue would have something to stick to. I'll get it nice and tight on the cleats there. So this thing's coming back, man. It's coming back slowly. All right, so let's go ahead and get this piece in. Is that the way it goes or is that too wide? That's the way it goes. And this lines up with the back edge of the cab. What I'm going to do before I clamp it is go ahead and take this piece and hold it up to it. Just make sure we got the right spot. 
where it's back far enough. That looks good right there. So we'll go ahead and get our big monster clamps. I love these things. You cannot have too many clamps, guys. My wife begs to differ, but clamps make your life easier doing this type of work. Just want to tap it in a little bit. Make sure we're square one more time. This side's got to go in just a touch. You gotta be careful too when you're doing your clamping. A lot of times it can shift things on you. So that looks good. I think what I'll do is just press this against here while I clamp to make sure. All right. We'll throw a clamp on the front. That looks good. And then we'll just tap on this to make sure we're down flat on the cleat. Yep, we are. So then we'll go ahead and get the brad nailer and we'll shoot some into the sides. These are inch and a half brads. Cool thing is you got a line to go by from the old ones. Trying to get it. There we go. We'll go ahead and do the other side. Looks pretty good. So now what we want to do is we can't really glue the sides, but we can glue these cleats here and then we can glue the top and shoot some brads down through. And then we'll probably get one more clamp. Eh, we really can't clamp it from the side because of the thing. We'll just line it up with this and then we'll, we'll get that part figured out where it was, it was all nasty. All right. Um, I think what I will do is make some markings on the side at the top of the cleat and the bottom of the cleats so that way I know where to shoot with the gun. That'll just give me a ballpark where to shoot some brads in. So we will go ahead. Get some glue on here. And then we'll go ahead and get some glue on this top edge. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab one more clamp to hold this thing upright. I'll be right back. Hang on one second. This way we're not fiddling with it, trying to hold it upright while we're doing this. So we got plenty of glue on the top. We got plenty of glue on the cleats. We'll get this lined up and squared. Hang on a second. Got to put this back down. I thought the clamp was wide enough. It's not. All 
All right, make sure that's square, that's square. We're good on there. Go ahead and move this down to the edge. Pull it tight. All right, that looks good. So we'll go ahead and get some brads in here to hold this. Check my markings on the side. Got right here. Got one right here. On this side, we're right here. And then we'll put a couple through the top. All right, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get one more clamp on this on each side, then we're clamped on the top and uh, let it sit for a little bit. And uh, that might be it for today because I don't think I got any of the half inch for the inside. Um, I'll take a look though. If we do, we'll do it. If not, we'll do it next time. All right, it's been drying for about an hour now and I wanted to address uh, one last thing for today. We're gonna stop here. We'll do the speaker panel and that, uh, that back piece next time. And then we'll go ahead and start doing the final bondo and such. But I did not like when this tore out, it left this huge gap because basically all the plywood split um, where it came out. And I was trying to think about how to do that. And the best option I, I thought, you know, you could pack it with bondo, but I mean, that's a heck of a gap. So what I did is I measured the gap and then I ran a piece of plywood through on the table saw and it fits perfectly in there. So basically we're gonna relaminate it and make our own plywood to replace that plywood. So I did it on both sides. We'll go ahead and glue it up. We'll tap these in there and we'll get them nice and snug. And, uh, and then we'll shoot some brads through the side and I think that will fix the problem for us. And then, yeah, we'll have to bundle a little bit from uh, where the uh, T-molding comes around the back, but it's much better to have wood there with glue much stronger than it would be to just pack that full of bondo. So we'll go ahead and glue these up and tap them in. And that'll be it for this episode. These are tight fit, almost couldn't get it back out of there. So we'll go ahead and get a whole bunch of glue in here. Cause we want this all to bond back up. So We're essentially remaking plywood for the spot that it ripped out, but it's good that we got that bad stuff out of there now. And then we'll go ahead and get glue on both sides of this. It was looking doubtful for a while, guys, but I think uh, I think this guy's got a shot. So, all right, get that in there. We'll tap it up, smooth that glue out, and then we'll go ahead and clamp this in a minute. And then once we sand all this, it's going to sand nice and flat. So let's go ahead and get the other side. Keep some glue in there. We want a nice tight bond. I saw a video this week. I guess there's a YouTube channel where a guy and his son just, uh, I think it's called like What's Inside or something like that. And I saw them smash a classic Pac Man with a sledgehammer. And I was just thinking to myself, like, what a jackass. You know what I mean? Like, I, I work on these games with my son. And uh, I'm trying to teach him the complete opposite. And instead, you know, he's trying to teach his son to be destructive, not realizing. I mean, I understand if you're curious about things, like you want to open up a light bulb and see how it works or something like that. But don't take something that's part of, like, history, you know, that somebody would gladly restore. I mean, look at all the effort I'm putting into this. So I think that guy needs to really evaluate what he does with his channel. Do something constructive instead. Got to get a piece of wood to tap that in there. That's the whole thing. They ain't making any more of these guys. All right, 
This one's a little off a little bit, but we'll be able to hit that with the belt sander and fix it. There we go. Looks pretty flush. All right, so we'll throw a clamp on it. And then we'll throw some brads in the sides. Let's wipe off some of the glue first. Like I said, once, once this is all done, I'll belt sand this to make it all nice and flush. Couple of clamps. Oh yeah, that pulled together real nice. We'll throw another one on the bottom. I always like to do my clamps in opposite directions too. That way you don't have tension just pulling them from one side. All right, we'll throw some brads in the middle and then we'll move the clamps and do the top and the bottom. one up top. There we go. And then we'll slide this up and we'll do a couple in the bottom here and then we're done. At least for this. We still got a long way to go. I just got 220 hooked up in my garage, so now I can hook up my big air compressor so I can uh, run the sandblast cat, and I'm pretty excited about that. My small compressor, I can only run it for like two minutes. All right. We'll let that dry up, and then we'll round this thing out. All right, guys, that's it for episode two of the Pac-Man Flood Restore. We got a lot done today. It, it, today is one of those days where it seems like you got a lot done, but you don't feel like you got a lot done. But we actually did quite a bit because we had this whole thing torn apart. We took all the stinky parts off, the, the swollen MDF stuff. We painted the whole cabinet on the inside so it doesn't smell like a sock anymore, a wet sock. And then uh, we went ahead and replaced some wood. We did the top. We did the back. We uh, repaired the piece from when we took it apart. And uh, I'm going to leave this clamped overnight and uh, we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some quarter inch and some half inch to go ahead and uh, cut out the wood piece where the speaker goes and that backdrop uh, piece. And uh, we're in pretty good shape. I think I'm also going to throw a brace in here to bring this back out because it is bowed a little bit. So um, we'll, have to, we'll have to take care of that. And uh, other than that, uh, we should have the next episode uh, within this week. And I also want to let you guys know, a ton of you were hitting me up. Uh, you saw me in one of the episodes wearing one of my Arcade Body Shop t-shirts. I made up about 20 of them uh, last year before I went to Southern Fry Game Expo to give them to some friends uh, for the launch of the channel. And everybody's like, hey, where can I get one of those? So I actually launched a Teespring. Um, I'm not really making anything off it. I did it as cheap as possible just so you guys could get the shirts. The guy who did the first run for me isn't available right now. So here you can pick your own sizes. I think it goes up to 5X. Um, there, there's women's ones on there. There's uh, hoodies you can get, and I, I did them as low as I could possibly do it for you. So it's just teespring.com forward slash arcade body shop. They're only going to be available till the end of the month. So if you're going to get one, hurry up and get one in the next two weeks or so. But uh, yeah, and it's a cool logo. It's a cool logo, and it shows you support the hobby and it's supporting the channel, and I appreciate it very much, guys. So that's episode two in the books, and we'll be back with episode three very shortly. Be sure to subscribe. We got good stuff coming.